three, two, one. What's up, Annette Soldiers? I'm the Net Alliance, and today we're asked the question, what if Saisi Tin survived Order 66? Now, as the title suggests, this is part seven of what if the Jedi Council survived Order 66. So if you haven't seen the previous parts or you'd like a refresher, I advise you to check those out to better elaborate on this video. Now, of course, you don't have to, but I would recommend it. So make sure to click the card at the top of the screen to return to the previous part. Now, with that said, Let's begin. Saisi Tin was a very powerful Jedi whose life was cut short by Darth Sidious. But, as you know, the theory is, what if he survived? So let's explore that theory. Now as we know, Kit Fisto survived his slash across the chest, so we could assume that Saisi's wound wasn't that deep either, and he could survive as well. So instead of dying, he just passed out, much like Kit Fisto did. Saisi woke up an hour later after being struck. His stomach was burning with pain as he looked around the room. Next to him laid the corpse of Agent Cooler. There was a single stab wound through the middle of the Zabra chest. Now let me just explain something real quick. So as you know, the series is what if the Jedi Council survived Order 66 and Aegon Kohler was actually part of the Jedi Council. So the reason why I decided to kill Kolar is because out of all the deaths of the Jedi Council, in my opinion, Aegon's injury is just too terrible for him to come back from. And for that reason, I kept him dead. Tin then noticed that Kit Fisto's body was missing as well. As he heard footsteps enter the room, the Jedi quickly pretended to be dead, laying lifeless on the floor right next to Aegon Kohler, just in case it was the Chancellor coming back to finish the job. In the room walked the 501st Captain Rex. He was escorted by two other clones. The Chancellor doesn't want us getting out, so we'll take the bodies out in secret, Rex commanded. Wait, the one clone said. Isn't that supposed to be three bodies? Rex looked around the room for a third body. No, I believe there are only two. Now let's get to work. The clones packed up Agen's and Sayisi's body into bags and took them away. They exited the Senate building and got onto a small transport ship. Sayisi tried to remain still, but his wound was so uncomfortable. He figured if he could move slightly, he'd be able to adjust his position to feel better. Unfortunately, one of the clones noticed the bag moving. Moments later, the clone ripped open the bag, spilling Ciaci out onto the floor. The two plane clones pointed their blasters at the wounded Jedi. However, before they could kill Tin, Rex told them to hold their fire. He wielded both of his blaster pistols from their holsters and walked up to the defenseless Ciaci by the orders of the Republic. You are declared to die, Jedi, Rex said, pointing his blaster towards Ciaci's face. But this time, the Republic is wrong. Rex quickly turned around, aiming his blasters at the other clones and pulling the triggers. He managed to kill both clones with one shot each. He then turned to Ciaci, reaching out his hand in support. We have to go. Now. On Tython, the entire Jedi Council has arrived, except for Masters Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Plo Koon. The Council is gathered along with Rex and a few other troops inside an ancient Jedi temple. The Captain explains that he and a few others discovered the chips. We didn't exactly know what the chips were, but we knew they had to go. Hundreds of clones either removed them or short-circuited them. However, although hundreds removed the inhibitor chips, there were still thousands of other clones who did not. He explained that Cody and the other clone commanders were against removing them, for they believed that the chip kept them sane and loyal to the Republic, and if they were to remove it, they'd be no better than the Separatists. He went on to say that Commander Wolf was planning on removing moving his too, but unfortunately, he forgot to. Master Mace Windu could hear the truth in Rex's voice, but he still had questions for the captain. Why were you chosen to take out Master's Coolers and Tin's bodies? I had my orders, General. He informed the council that Skywalker instructed him to stay with the Chancellor and do what he needed him to do, while he dealt with the traitors. And I did as commanded, but something felt wrong. General Skywalker was not the same. Once Rex saw the damage to the Chancellor's chambers, as well as the dead Jedi, he knew it was time to call the code word. Code word? Kayati Mooney questioned. What is this code word of which you speak? We use the word rebel. The captain explained that he created the code word for all the clones who removed the inhibitor chip. For once the troops received that word, that means the Republic has betrayed them, and they are to report as soon as possible to a secret Republic cruiser dubbed the Savior. Captain Rex never truly believed that there would be a day where he would actually have to face his own Republic. But with the Jedi's help, they could kill the Chancellor and take back the Republic. Though the Council is hesitant at first, they soon realized Rex was right. The Chancellor needed to die. He was just far too powerful to be left alive. It was then they started planning. The Jedi and the Rebel clones would stand together and face the might of the Republic they once served. After a few hours, the plan is finally hatched. And Master Yoda gives a final statement. Destroy the Sith. We must, or die trying, we shall. It was then, Obi-Wan, Plo Koon, and Ahsoka entered the room. What is going on? Kenobi questioned. What happened? The Jedi looked towards Obi-Wan, only sorrow on their faces. Kenobi was confused as he looked around the room. Wait, where's Anakin? 
And that's where I choose to end this part. Now for what I'm looking at, we got two parts left and the next part is gonna be a little surprise for you guys. So I hope you're ready for that. Please remember to like and subscribe for more videos, you guys. And until next time, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.